Okay, this is how to make a bushcraft whistle just like this one here. Okay, all right. First of all, you need to get your piece of hazel like this that you've cut. And you need to make sure there's no leaves on it or anything like that. So just cut them all off like that. And then with this piece of wood you found here, what you need to do is make sure that there aren't any buds on it like these which are trying to grow out because what they'll do is when you make the whistle the skin will be interrupted by these and it won't pull off easily so what I'm going to do is find a piece that hasn't got many in I found one just there and then from there I'm just going to cut so I don't want anything that way I'm just going to get rid of all that just cut that off Alright, once I've cut that off, I'm just going to cut this ragged end off. Like that. Don't need that piece. Now what I'm going to do is basically start the actual um, part of the whistle where you have to take the bark off. So what I do is I remove the bark, but remove it intact because then I can, once I've basically cut the notch for the airflow, I slide it back over and it creates a mouthpiece. So first, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure this end is nice and flat. Just by slicing it off this. Really helps if you've got a nice sharp knife. Okay. Alright. Now, once you've done that, what I'm going to do is make two cuts in it. It's going to be one cut about one centimetre up from the end, like that, and that's going to be just there. I'm just going to mark that with a little cut there. And then there's going to be another one quite far up here. About an two three centimeters after the first cut which is going to be about there what I'm going to now do is in between these two cuts I'm going to cut a notch and this notch is going to be where the air is going to flow through so I'm going to start there I'm just going to push down from there onto that middle notch I'm just going to start cutting like that because what I need to do is create a notch where the air is going to go in, which is going to make the whistle noise. Okay, now the first not the first time you do the notch, the skin has to be on. Now don't make the notch too deep, it just needs to be nice and shallow like that, because all you're actually doing is making the hole for the skin. The wood underneath is all going to be changed about. Now if I go back to the original first little cut I made, I'm going to basically carry the cut on so I'm going to put the tip of my knife up to there and then I'm going to roll my blade straight over like that. And what that's going to do is going to cut the skin of the piece of hazel but not the wood. I'm going to keep rolling like that. Now what I'm going to do is get my axe out of my bag here and just put my knife away. Like that. And what I'm going to do is just basically hammer or roll, I should say, the wood. So I'm going to roll it and hammer it at the same time. Just on this piece here past the notch. And you have to be gentle because you don't want the skin of it to break. Because if it breaks it won't work. And you have to keep going till what happens is suddenly the... the the skin, the bark of the wood, basically it'll, it may, it'll make a little popping noise and it'll crack and it'll push that way, away from the wood a little bit. Just keep it soon. There you go, just happened. If you zoom in there, what you'll see is that the wood has separated 
well the skin is separated from the other piece of skin about a millimetre and when that's happened I know it's ready to give it a twist if I twist the skins came loose and it'll be able to come off like that and then if that can come off like that it's ready and you also need, you need to make sure that it hasn't split and don't chuck this piece away because you need that later so I'm just putting it to the side right now I've got this piece with that notch in it I'm going to put my axe just down here for a sec and I'm going to make another slice just where the last cut originally I made was and again I'm going to make that in a big rolling motion just like that and keep going right the way till it meets the other notch nice and deep like that put the knife away and then with my axe I'm just going to again hammer away until the two pieces separate and I hear that little snap or pop and then I know it's ready to twist Give that a go. Just if you think it's taking too long, just give it a twist. And there you go. It didn't pop and it didn't separate, but I basically uh, bruised the the skin for quite a while and it hadn't done it, so I thought it must have loosened. So now I just give it a twist, and yep, it comes out. Again, this piece cannot have a split down it. Okay, and I'm just putting that piece to the side as well. Okay, now I'll bring back out my knife. This notch here was only made so the skin would have that cut in it. Now this notch is going to get be made much bigger. I'm not going to pull this edge here back anymore, but I'm going to make it deeper so this notch has more room in it for air. Um, basically, I'm just going to start slicing away back into the board. Like Keep slicing. Making it deeper. Again, it's ideal that you have a super sharp knife. The sharper, the better. This is a Mora companion knife, by the way, in pink. Once I've made that cut, if I bring this piece here back, when I slide it back on, like so, when I slide it back on, you have to be careful because you don't want it to rip. When I put it back over, there's now like a void underneath the skin, and that void is basically where the noise is going to come from. So I'm just going to take that off, and now I've got to cut the chamber, well, the, the basically the mouthpiece where the air is going to flow through. So what I'm going to do is just stand it up like that, go down like that, and just cut or shave a piece off like that. It needs to be a small piece, just enough so when you blow, some air can get through. Like that, and then I might deepen that actually. I didn't think it was deep enough when I looked at it. So it's just trial and error. You have to keep putting that piece on and giving it a blow till you think that it's made the high the noise high pitched enough. I'll just try that now. Yeah, it might have worked. So I'll put this piece back on careful when putting it back on. I'll put this piece back on and then just give it a blow and see if it makes whistle noise. So what you've now created is a tiny little hole just in there, just pointing my knife and that is what you blow into just into there and then 
the air basically travels down there, keeps going down and goes into this chamber here where it makes a whistle and I'll give it a go and see if it works. So all you get in is a really low pitched noise and again it's just trial and error. So take off the piece and deepen it. That I'm getting enough air through there so I'm not really going to play about with that very much. But what I will do is make this piece here deeper and I'll just keep doing that until I get the, I'll keep putting the piece back on and blow in until I get a high pitched enough noise and that's how to make a bushcraft whistle.